Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today it's going to be short and sweet. I'm working on a 2015 Jeep Wrangler and it needs the temperature sensor replaced. I thought I'd show you how to do it real quick just so that if you're going to do the same task at home maybe you can save some time and know what you're going to have to do to access it. Let's go to the Jeep and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, this is a 2015 Rubicon. The only way you can access that temperature sensor is to remove the driver's side inner fender panel. That's the only way. You can't go from the top, you can't go from the bottom, there's just no room. But once you remove the, the inner fender panel structure, uh, you have clear access to it. There are five little uh, push pin tabs like this that hold the panel in place. And then for some unknown reason, Chrysler decided these four rivets along the top of the fender here hold that panel in place as well and you have to remove that. There's just no way around it. Anyway, accessing it is pretty good because there's the sensor. And know that when you are working in here to try to get it loose, that orange collar on it, you have to pull that out about an eighth of an inch and because it locks in place. So once you've pulled that locking mechanism off, it makes it easier to release the tab. If you'll notice mine though, it's facing the firewall. So there's not much room to get in there with your hand and release the tab anyway. So what I did was I took a 19 millimeter wrench, put it around the base here and turned it, was able to turn this just a little bit. If I can turn it like half of a rotation because I'm right-handed, I can get my thumb on that little tab and release the, release the uh, switch, which is what I've done here. See what I mean? It's got that little locking tab on it. You just have to be able to press on this but to get leverage on it, you gotta get it where you can get to it. Depends on whether you're right-handed or left-handed. Anyway, that's how you access the switch. Uh, now we'll just change it out real quick. Okay, it's kind of hard to do one-handed. So I'm sorry if the uh, camera's a little shaky. I'm not accustomed to doing that. But this one's already loose. We may lose a little coolant, not too much. We were changing out the radiator hoses and thermostat on this as well. And so the coolant's already a lot of it's gone, obviously not all of it. Here's the new thermostat, or the sensor unit, I should say. Well, you also want to make sure the one you have is correct, and the one I got is not. So, in with the old. We'll call this a tale of two sensors. If you go to Amazon, to buy a coolant temperature sensor for a Wrangler, nearly every one of them it shows you is this one. That is incorrect. This is an oil temperature sensor that mounts with an oil pressure sensor on top of the intake manifold by the oil filter. If any of you with the Wrangler uh, have had it over 100,000 miles, there's a good chance that that uh, has developed a leak because they're made of plastic and you have to replace it and you might as well replace the two sensors while you're at it. Uh, in my case I replaced it with uh, a doorman unit that was all aluminum instead of plastic. Anyway my point being that in purchasing the what I thought to be the correct sensor since I hadn't seen one uh, I bought this off of Amazon and this is what was sent to me. Well we found out just a moment ago as I went to install it, there's no way it was going to fit. It was way too big. So after doing a little bit more research, especially on Amazon, I find that the first page and a half, almost two pages of products for an engine temperature coolant sensor show this sensor, and that is incorrect. Now the, uh, the plug, the uh, wiring harness plug looks the same. If you'll notice on these, let me turn this over, they look exactly the same. So it's the same plug will fit, but it is definitely not the same sensor. The coolant temperature sensor fits into the cylinder head. When you go to the auto parts store, they'll ask you, well, there's two sensors. Which one do you want? The one in the cylinder head or the one by the oil filter? You want the one on the cylinder head if you want temperature sensor for your coolant. If you want the oil temperature sending unit, then you want the one by the oil you want the one that's located next to the oil filter and that will be this larger one. 
This smaller one is what you need. So if you are looking on Amazon, you can find the correct one on there, but be sure you look at the correct picture because if the threads are nearly the size of the unit itself, that won't be the correct sensor for you. You want the one with the smaller thread set. Okay, back to the original sensor. We can take it out now that we have the correct sensor. Use my tool to get it out. I used a uh, little ratchet that I cut the handle off of so that it would fit into tight places like this. Okay, so here is the original sensor. You see it's the shorter and instead of an O-ring that the wheel one has, this one has washer, crust washer, and that end of that uh, sensor is exactly like what we want. So, put it down here, get the other one, and here's a new one. It's got the washer uh, crush ring on it, and it should go in more easily. You don't have to put it in too tight, but you do want it snug enough to compress that little crush washer. You see the little wrench there is pretty short. Okay, that should do it. Okay, now it's all back in place. You modify a little ratchet like this, makes it a whole lot easier to get into tight places. It's easy to do. I have way too many ratchets, so I figured just cut one down. That's it for today. I hope you learned something new. I sure did. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Catch you in the next video.